At the end of day two at Emirates Old Trafford, it's time for Ask George. Hi George, that was bonkers, I think. It was the botch. It uh, very natural, I think. <laughs> uh, first question. It was very, I can't even remember their names already. Phil and, are you okay? Actually, actually, are you? Are you? Uh, Much more like, less likely to do this now because I've got to send everything on WeTransfer. It takes forever. Uh, first question from Tom Vickers. He asks, yet yes. again with this England side, I find myself asking, what have we just witnessed? All I know is it's damn fun. Do you reckon Tom Vickers is his name or a description of what he does? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was really good fun, but I don't know what the question was. Did you have fun? Yeah, I, I thought it was one of the most fun days I've, I've ever had doing this job. Yeah, I thought it was absolutely brilliant, yeah. Uh, Nicholas asks, was that basball in its purest form? Yeah, I, I saw that question come in. I don't know that it was, you know, I but, but what does that mean? So, I don't know. Does that mean that you've got to go out and smash it all the time? Because actually they didn't. They built an innings. You know, early on in the day they played really just good cricket, didn't they? And then accelerated hugely later. I is that basketball or, or is that just really good aggressive cricket? I don't know the answer, you tell me. But do you think that was perhaps the point of it, was that it was, it was controlled aggression and that's... I think everyone's been getting a bit carried away that basketball is hit everything for six and, you know, if it could go for eight, hit it for eight. But that was, you know, wait for your moment and then yeah. kill. Well, if that's the definition of it, that's exactly what it was. I mean, it was really, really good cricket. But I thought that they earned the right to the big shots later from what uh, Crawley and Malin did early doors. Uh, Haludi Foodie <laughs> asks, do we have to accept that Zach Crawley will be inconsistent but his fast scoring will win England games? I don't know, that seems to be the view of the England team, but I don't know because I don't think he did play quite the same today. So I thought for all the eye-catching shots you're going to see in the highlights package that the most important one came when he was on 11, I think he was 11, and he was beaten. He played a missed one from start, which was like just ridiculous because ball angled across him. And in the past, he might have followed it. He might have fenced it a, a bit. He just played the line and he didn't push and he didn't flash and didn't follow it. And so he played a missed. And I thought that was different. And because he survived that, he went on. So I think he can be more consistent. What you can see with him, what we've talked about a lot, isn't it? Is the high seat. He's got all the time in the world to play pace. Uh, he obviously has loads and loads of shots. He does some of the stuff that is most difficult quite easily. Uh, what he struggled with is playing the moving ball, but that's obviously very difficult. Uh, but I didn't think, I don't think you can just leave it to chance, you know, I think you've got to keep trying to get better. And I did think he was a bit better today. Uh, Sushan asks, how key was a continuous faith in Crawley to play such an innings? Well, I mean, he's here, isn't he? Um, he's here, and, and look, I think he, he just said in the press conference, that under most coaches, he wouldn't be here. Most coaches and captains, he'd have been dropped. So that's absolutely key. Also, it doesn't completely end the conversation because if you gave lots of players in county cricket enough opportunities, they would score the odd hundred. What they wouldn't probably do is score a hundred like that. You know, a really dominant hundred against a very, very good attack, which actually seemed to rattle Australia. So you can see, we always, I think being able to see why they stuck with him. But, um, you know, maybe that was a microcosm of the uh, development of this team. They've uh, progressed from just talking about a really aggressive game and trying to smash it into being a bit more thoughtful and nuanced. Uh, and that's what we saw from them today, yeah. Matthew Wright asks, without wanting to be captain hindsight, is it really that shocking that Moeen, having batted at three for his Worcestershire career, should be a reasonable option for England to try given the circumstances? I mean, I, I hear where you're coming from and, and maybe not. Uh, but you know, it's been quite a long time since he batted three. He hasn't scored a... In 2016, he scored four test centuries, and since then he's only scored one. And, and I think he'd given up on his batting a little bit, not completely, but he'd stopped quite, uh, being a batter and started to be a bit more of a biffer. I think he'd sold himself short as a batter in a way, and we know all the mitigating reasons why. He's a, a super team guy, and he's gone up and down the order, and he's, he's sort of settled at eight for a while and become a one-day uh, number seven. You know, when he started his career, he was getting centuries of one, two, and three in limited overs cricket. So he changed the way he was playing, and he was a much less good batter for it. But what you saw today was a reminder, a really beautiful reminder, I thought, how good he could be and could have been. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a coda on the end of the career, I'm afraid. I, I, I hope he changes his mind, but I don't 
think he'll carry on into India. But I do think it was a reminder of how much talent he's got and how good he could have been. Well, Hugh Lloyd sticks with that theme. Is Moeen a bowler who bats, a batter who bowls, an all-rounder or just a bloody good cricketer who people should appreciate more and enjoy watching? Well, he's, he's, he's the last, isn't he? Of course he is. And, and, you know, even as I answered the previous question, I thought to myself, it's a bit of a sour answer, really. And I'm sorry I said it in a way because he has won two World Cups. He has played 60 <laughs> odd test matches and, what is it, 200 wickets and 3,000 runs? Pretty great, isn't it? So I don't know. Look, I, 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 I saw a moment he was very young. Uh, I don't know how old he was, 11 or 12 or something. And we, I think we all thought that he was going to go an average 40 at test level, and he's, he's averaging under 28 coming into this test. And, it, and that does seem a, a bit of an unworthy reflection of his, of his talents. But at the same time, he's won all those games and those World Cups and stuff, so life takes you in different directions sometimes. But uh, it was lovely to see. Uh, you know, I, I, I fervently agree with the uh, sentiments of your question. Stephen Kassoon asks, Ironically, is Joe Root's dismissal the best thing that could have happened in the match situation? Oh, no, I get what he means. Um, yes, because Joe Root was bowled by one that kept horribly low. It's pretty much unplayable. And, and I get that because what, what he's saying is, you know, if England get a big enough lead, Australia have got to bat again, maybe like, maybe a deficit of 200, maybe, at a push. And the ball seems to be going up and down a bit. Because uh, 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 as well as Joe getting hit, Ben uh, uh, bowled, Ben Stokes was hit by a couple that reared on him. Um, so yes, I take your point. If England have taken Batty last out of the equation, and obviously they haven't yet, uh, that is advantage England, yeah. Are you surprised England didn't declare at any point today? Pleasantly, uh, no, not as the day progressed because it was so obviously better to uh, bat and get the runs now because I think it would get more difficult. But uh, when we arrived this morning, I, I was fearful that they would do that. Um, so I'm relieved they didn't. But I think it was pretty clearly the right thing not to. Harrison Burridge asks, has Pat Cummins' passive approach with his captaincy been the reason England have seized the initiative so quickly? I don't think so. I think most of the credit has to go to England. But what I did see today is an Australian team that was the most rattled Australian team I've seen, I reckon, since the 10-11 Ashes tour in Australia, which was really unusual. I didn't think I'd ever see again. But, you know, I've got a lot of respect uh, for Australian cricket, um, sadly. <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, history has taught that they're terribly good and robust and I, I, they might well come back tomorrow and be uh, bigger and better than ever. But it did feel at times today like a tipping point in the series and a really unusual tipping point where the side that's actually 2-1 behind suddenly seems so dominant. But we'll see. Well, Rob Rush asks pretty much that. The afternoon session today was not the first time in the series that the Australians have looked out of ideas and Cummins has had limited influence as a captain. Do you think the momentum has completely shifted in England's favour or do Australia still have something left in the tank? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I certainly have those sentiments, those feelings today, yeah. But you know, you'd be a hostage to fortune to, to, to go too big on that right now. But yeah, certainly standing here right now, it was that sort of day. I think, I think it was a, a day as well that reminded you how important Nathan Lyon has been with Australia's success because, oh my Lord, are they missing him. Uh, it's funny because when he did his uh, press conference when he was injured, he was, he was very emotional and it almost felt as if he was saying goodbye because he, he, he was very respectful and, and, and very positive and nice and honourable about Todd Murphy. But I, it felt to me as if he thought Todd Murphy might replace him. Well, that sure as hell hasn't happened. So I thought today uh, Pat Cummins missed him with a pang in his heart. And yeah, it, as I say, it felt like a tipping point. But honestly, uh, Australian cricket is so strong and this, this is a very good Australia side. World Test Champions, remember? I wouldn't write them off just yet. Uh, Bobby Smith asks, will the series be defined by two injuries? The one to Pope that allowed Wokes a way in and the one to Lyon that destroyed the makeup of the Australian attack? Such a good question. I saw this one come in as well and it actually annoyed me a bit because I thought it was so well put and such a good idea that I kind of wished I'd nicked it for a piece. <laughs> yeah, really good. Hey, I'm going to. I'm telling you. It's a niche show, we'll get away with it. <laughs> Which of those Apart, injuries... Unless you're an advertiser, and then it is <laughs> massive. Massive. Which of those injuries do you think will play a bigger part, Pope or Lion? Well, Lion, to be honest, but, but, but the, the point he makes about Pope is really good. England are, funnily enough, a better balanced side. I mean, I think you've also probably seen that 
hope. Um, I had done a pretty good job at number three, really, because you've seen how tough it is. Although I think Moen made the highest score by number three in the series today. Amazing. And finally, Adrian Bryan asks, does George know any reliable rain dances we can all do for Saturday? We well, must be an Australian. I mean, I just, uh, the weather forecasts are nonsense. I, you know, as someone who's been doing this for years, you can never rely on weather <laughs> forecasts. I mean, one of the very few times I had was at Leeds. I went, I went for a snooze. Uh, midway through that day when it was raining and almost immediately I got back to the hotel because that's how old and dull I am. Uh, I, uh, it's, they came back on the pitch so you just can't rely. We were talking about this today instead of the forecast we might as well just go back to the days when they had cows and oh look it's sitting down. Was it was that a sign that it was going to rain or not rain? Uh, rain. Why would a cow sit down if it was going to rain? Anyway, and so I, I thought it might be fun and you could have them at cow corner couldn't you? No, the problem would but you'd have to move them across the pitch. I, I, that, that could be fun as well. Maybe maybe as they were walking, if you hit them, it could be a, a five, like the, the tree <laughs> in uh, Canterbury or what used to be there. Um, what do you think? And then, <laughs> then, if you're a good batter, you could keep trying to hit the cow and really milk the field. <laughs> Feel dirty. Feel dirty. <laughs> On that bombshell. I'm sorry, at least I haven't spat on her today. <laughs> See you on day three. Sit in the bar, no. <laughs>